In this video, I wanna talk a little bit about Dorian the Dud. So I got up at 4.45 this morning. Uh, I stopped in a little hotel in Osborne, Kansas. I was gonna try to get to Salina, but it was 10 o'clock and I was like, I still had an hour and a half, at least an hour and a half to go. And I was like, I'm going to bed. And thankfully there was a little hotel in the middle of nowhere. So that's where I stopped. So I'm, I'm on my way to Southeast Kansas uh, for a little bit of Adjust Your TV side hustle, which is um, doing video and marketing for a whitetail outfitter down there, which is super fun. So it looks like Dorian is uh, not really gonna be a thing. Um, there may be a few claims for, for a few people, um, but it's not gonna keep a bunch of people busy and, you know, start off by saying, you know, thankful, you know, that, that the, uh, basically the coast of the uh, U.S. was spared. Um, definitely have folks in the Bahamas in our prayers um, because that's, they're pretty devastated down there. So it's, this is, it's pretty serious, you know, when this, when we go to work, it's when stuff like this goes down and a lot of people's lives are affected in a very, very major way. But, you know, again, that's what we train for. It's it's like we're kind of like the fire department. You know, the fire department doesn't doesn't pray for uh, fires. They don't like drive up and down the street or like cheer when somebody's house starts to burn down or they get a call because that's what they're good at and they're, that's what they're trained to do is to help out in those situations. And we're we're kind of the same way. You know, we don't pray for for hurricanes or whatever to happen, but that's our job is to help people out in the aftermath of. of big major disasters like hurricanes and wildfires, etc. So anyway, I'm getting a lot of email, emails from you um, expressing your kind of dismay and you're, 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 you're a bit discouraged that, you know, the Dorian didn't do anything and we're kind of, I mean, right now is the peak of hurricane season. Like we're, we're in the statistical peak right now. Like this is, this is it right here. Um, after this week and next week, um, it drops off pretty uh, dramatically for there being a chance, another chance for a big storm. That doesn't mean there, there won't be one. And I'll always maintain this when you watch my videos. If you watch a lot of my videos, I talk a lot about the fact that hurricanes are kind of like, when you're a cat adjuster, they're kind of like gravy. If, if there is one and you can go work it, you've already been working the, the whole rest of the year, right? So. The hurricane usually caps off towards the end of the, of the storm season, you know, August, September, into October a little bit. Most working cat property IAs have already been working since March and April, doing wind, hail, water claims. Um, you know, it's, it's not until late summer that the big catastrophes usually happen, like the wildfires and the hurricanes, but they don't happen every year. And so I. I I always try to do my best, and you guys let me know if I'm failing on this, but I always want to try to temper expectations with these things. I have been a catastrophe adjuster for 20 years, and I've worked six hurricanes, and I've, I've been put on standby for, I mean, at least, at least 30, three dozen. I mean, it's, I, I can't, I can't even think, I mean, all, so many times I've been called, to go on standby for a hurricane that didn't that did exactly what Dorian just just did. It happens so often, right? And the only way Dorian's going to be remembered is that it pretty much leveled the Bahamas. If it didn't hit the Bahamas, nobody would remember Dorian. So in this video, we're going to talk about what you can do in the downtime between storm seasons, and we're going to start right now. This is Adjuster TV. What's up, Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent catastrophe property adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so that you'll never miss a video. Okay, let's just jump right straight into this. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this, but I, I wanna give you some options. I wanna talk about what you can do and what a lot of experienced adjusters do in the downtime so that you're not facing the end of the storm season with having not done any storms or done only a one or two small storms, right? Starting up as an independent catastrophe adjuster is very, very hard. And, and it's not even the training part, right? So like getting training, getting learning how to use Xactimate, uh, going to the, the certification classes so that you can work State Farm or that you can work whatever carrier, 
is the easy part, right? And it's it's still a little bit challenging. I mean, there's a lot of, for a lot of people, and myself included, when I got started, you know, insurance uh, language is, was foreign to me, right? It didn't make a lot of sense. It was like, what? And there was a lot of legal terms and a lot of legalese that, that is in a policy because a policy is a contract, right? So that's the easy part. The hard part is, is that if, especially if you want to do CAT, like if, if you got into this because you heard about all the money that you could make on CAT and you've got your heart set on working CAT, you have to wait for the CATs to happen, right? So this, the, the mother nature is, is who's going to tell you when you can work. It's not that, you know, well, this IA firm doesn't hire newbies. This IA firm, you know, they send all the new people home and they're only letting the experienced adjusters do stuff. This IA is doing this and this IA is doing that. And this IA is not giving me calls, you know, because they, something on my resume, it's not, it has nothing to do with it, right? The reason why you haven't been deployed yet is because there hasn't been a storm. This has been a kind of a slow year. We get them, right? Even for experienced adjusters, this has been a kind of a slow year. It's gonna be more challenging for new people because you have to almost kind of wait for your opportunity. There are, are some carriers who will, as part of their contract with uh, their IA firm, will say, will require them to bring newbies on every storm, right? To, to bring new adjusters on every storm that they have, one or two or three or four, whatever it is, depending on the size of the storm, right? But that's still only like a small number, right? If, if there are, you know, a thousand new people who want to become cat adjusters and there's only a half a dozen storms and they're only bringing on, you know, three or four new people on each one, well, obviously that's statistically insignificant, right? Um, so a big event like a hurricane is a great way to get started on as a new catastrophe adjuster, right? A big event where they need all hands on deck. You know, there's a big number, a number of a thousand, several thousand adjusters who are always working, and then they're handling all the claims that come in, right? And then you get like a big spike in claims volume, and then they gotta, they have to, they basically have to recruit from whoever wants to, is interested in doing it and wants to do it. So for a lot of adjusters who want to do CAT, a big hurricane event is really going to be not your only not your only chance, but like your big chance. Like it's the big opportunity, which is why, again, I mean, it's so important that when you do get that big opportunity, because another storm could blow up in two days and be all over the news and all over the coast, right? Um, it's, which is why it's so important that you crush it on your first storm, right? You have to show up with the plan. At this time of year, it's just, we're pushing into the middle of September. This is, again, like I said in the beginning, where the storm season's tapering off. Not much is gonna happen from here on until next spring, right? Of course, absolutely, it could get winter storms, ice storm, you know, ice dam storms, um, weight of snow storms. You can get early spring, like, you know, flooding stuff that's like sewer and drain back up. Those are, those are common claims to work. You can get early spring wind storms. You can get a late fall wind storm. You can even get a late fall hail storm, right? But it's not common, right? You, you kind of have to play the statistics a little bit, and that is it's gonna be between, you know, really between like May and right now is like your big window, right? Even like probably just really May to August. It's like you get locked into a storm or two or three and during that time, and that's, you make your money for the year as a cat adjuster. And you know, you may ride out one of those storms through November, but there's no new storms happening, right? If that makes sense. So what can you do? You wanna do claims, you know, you spent a lot of time and you spent a lot of money getting prepared to do this. So what can you do now this storm season is effectively, it's effectively ending. I mean, I'm not gonna mince words with you. Uh, what can you do right now to keep your head above water, keep your family fed, keep the mortgage paid, and all that stuff while you wait for storm season to, to, to come again next spring. And I've done videos on side hustles, I've done videos on you know other kinds of work or whatever, but I'm gonna tell you right now, probably, especially if you've never handled claims before or you've handled a few, and you're, or you're a beginner, and that is to contact every single IA firm that you can think of, all the IA firms that you've Already, whose rosters you're already on, contact these folks and let them know that you want to do daily work. You want to run daily claims. It's going to be slow starting. They may say, you know, if you're brand new, they may say, well, we'll start you out with one or two claims and we'll kind of 
hold your hand with them and see how you do, right? They'll try you out. They want to cultivate new talent, absolutely 100%. So they're gonna work with you and make, sh and, and make sure that you have the best chances for success. And if this clicks with you and you seem to get it and it makes sense and you're able to, to run with it, then they'll start giving you more claims, right? And then you're off to the races. And daily claims, in contrast to cat claims, are all year round, right? And they're mostly gonna be water claims for the most part. So you're gonna have the toilet backs up. You're gonna have the insured uh, put some chicken in the sink to defrost and they ran some, we're running cold water over it and the phone rang and it was an emergency phone call. They, they completely forgot about the chicken in the sink, filling up with water, jumped in a truck and drove to their parents' place eight hours away to take care of somebody who had an accident, right? And then the sink, the water runs all, you know, it's those kinds of claims. Those don't wait for any particular season, they just happen whenever, right? So daily claims are something that you can get into and once you kind of establish yourself and you build relationships with some IA firms and you can be pretty busy depending on where you live and what the volume of claims are, how many other daily adjusters there are. So there, there are some factors with it, right? Which brings me to my second point with this, and that is, is that if you live in a place where it's it's saturated with adjusters, uh, or they don't have, there's not much of a need. Like you try to get on and do daily claims, and you might get one or two every two or three weeks, right? You can't live on that, right? So what can you do, right? Well, you can get a job delivering pizza and keep keep hammering away at that and try to build your volume up, and hope that some other adjuster like decides to move or retire or whatever, and so you get some more volume. Or you can sort of treat it like cat work, right? IA firms and carriers have needs in certain parts of the country where there aren't a lot of adjusters or any adjusters, right? You can, I would do this, I, and I have done this actually, reach out to your IA firms and let them know that you want to do daily claims and say, I'm willing to travel. So if you have a place where you have some volume and you need extra help, I want to, I want to get over there and help you out with that, right? And they may say, well, <laughs> no way. Or more likely, they'll say, "Well, are you sure? I mean, because we've got a lot, we've got a lot of stuff going on in, in the Northeast. So, I mean, if you want to spend the winter in New Jersey, you know, I can give you claims. Or if you want to spend uh, the winter in Seattle, there's some companies that can keep you busy in those areas. There are underserved areas where there aren't a lot of adjusters. Most adjusters are from Texas. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I truly don't. A lot of those guys." don't ever travel for cat. They don't have to because there's always some sort of a hailstorm somewhere in Texas and they're, well, I'm going to go to El Paso for the summer and then I'm going to go to Austin for the summer or I'm going to do this, blah, blah. They don't leave the state. I've talked to a lot of adjusters who've like never run claims outside of Texas and they've been adjusters for years, years and years. There are, like I said, there are adjusters that live in Seattle, but they're, they're shorthanded in, in some of those areas. So, you know, maybe even like Southern California between say Ventura and San Diego, which is a massive area, right? There are tens of millions of people that live in, the, in that area, and you probably, if you're willing to sit in the car for a while, could get some work and spend the winter, sorry, I'm looking at my speedometer, you could spend the winter in Southern California running claims, right? You probably have to get your California license. The, the bottom line with this is, if you want to do claims, doing daily claims, Again, you know, you're gonna to have to find a, a company that is willing to cultivate new talent and give you a chance, and not all of them will because they don't necessarily wanna have new people bumbling around on their claims, or they may not have the resources to help you get up and running or to hold your hand, and some companies do, right? Always, no matter what, as a cat adjuster, as a claims adjuster, whether you're doing auto, property, cat, field, desk, daily, doesn't, does not matter. Always within yourself cultivate the attitude that you're there to help. You're there to, to, to solve a problem for, your, for the IA firm or for the carrier. You're there to help them close claims, right? You don't call up and tell them all your personal problems. Well, I got this mortgage, I got, a, you know, I got kids to feed or whatever, I just need to get some work done, da, 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 da. You call people and you tell, you, are, you become the, the, the answer to their prayers, right? A, a, an IA manager may be sitting there with, too much volume on a bunch of claims that are out in the middle of nowhere and not enough adjusters, right? That guy or gal needs you to help him or her. All that being said, you've got options, you've got opportunities. I didn't know, when I first got started as an IA, I had no idea there was such a thing as daily claims. No clue, right? 
and I got State Farm certified. I spent, you know, $4,000 getting training uh, at Vail, bought a new laptop, and, you know, bought a, a ladder and a bunch of gear, and got my, my truck serviced and all this stuff, and then sat there for 10 months. There was no work, I, or there was no cats, right? So I had, I, I, so I went back to doing TV work for a little while until the next spring when I heard that there was a storm and then I went on that storm. If I had known better, I would have tried to have gotten on daily claims over the winter. Some IA firms will have no problem at all with you, with you as long as you're up front and it's always be forthright with, with everything that you do and say with this job. They'll have no problem with you saying, hey, you know, I'd like to um, help you guys out. You know, let me know where you have a need in the country. I'll just go there, I'll, I'll get a hotel room and I'll just, you know, if you meet in Southern California, I'll find a place in the middle of the, you know, the valley or the whatever, and I'll work those claims for you. Um, but I want to let you know that I also want to work hail next summer. So uh, if that's cool with you, let's you know, I, let me. I really want to help you out, right? A lot of companies will be cool with that. They'll say, yeah, it's totally fine. You know, we may even have cat work for you if you want to do cat. We'll let you go on cat, and then you can come back. You know, when you're done with cat, and do jump back on your daily claims, right? Other companies are going to say, well, you know what, we really prefer that if you're going to be doing daily, we want to be able to have you make a commitment to us, and we want to be able to count on you. So to recap, don't lose hope. Don't lose, you know, don't be discouraged right now. I know that you spent, like I said, you spent a lot of time and you spent a lot of money getting ready for this, and now it looks like you're going into the winter, into the downtime with nothing, because Dorian, you know, you, you may have put a lot of your hopes uh, into Dorian being a thing, and if it's not, which it doesn't look like it is, you know, what do you do now, right? You, you feel like you're kind of screwed. You're not screwed. You have options. And those options are essentially to pound the pavement, hit the bricks, and just get on the phone and start calling the IA firms, all the IA firms that you're already on rosters with, and any IA firms, and I'll have a list of them in the description below, where you're watching this video, whether it's on adjustertv.com or it's on YouTube, I'm gonna have a list of some IA firms that I know that will give you a chance as a new adjuster to do daily, right? And again, don't forget, if you're willing to travel, which you should be, because it'll absolutely 100% improve your opportunities for, for getting claims and getting experience and making some money over the winter, and you could make a lot of money over the winter, believe it or not, let them know that you're willing to travel. Question of the day. Do you have your home state or your designated home state adjuster license? If you don't, head on over to adjustertv.com slash start for more information about how to get licensed. There's also a lot of great resources on there for how to get started, period, as well as what an independent adjuster is and what we do. So anyway, if you like what you're seeing here, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV here on YouTube. I have so many videos on this YouTube channel about being an independent adjuster. I, I can't even, when I started this two years ago, almost two years ago, I had, I, I mean, I had no idea that this this would turn into what it has. And I really, do, I, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been watching, especially if you've been watching from the beginning. So I'm excited to see what the next couple of years brings and beyond that. And if you have ideas uh, for videos, or if you have, if, listen, if you've got questions about this, if you have a question about getting started, or if you have questions about running claims, if you have questions about Xactimate or whatever, you can reach out to me directly. Go to adjustertv.com slash contact. You can send me an email and I will, that, those, that contact form goes straight into my email and I will respond to you directly and answer your question. And if I get enough people asking the same question, I'll just, I'll make a video about it. So thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. You know, there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of bugs in the Midwest and I forgot how many bugs there are. I spent the summer in Montana and I probably had to clean my windshield of bugs like one time that whole summer, this whole summer. But <laughs> I got into Nebraska last night and I, or yesterday afternoon and I thought it was raining. It sounded like it was raining. And I was like, you know, it's a big storm cloud over there. And I was like, all right, man, I, I, you know, I, I love a good Midwestern uh, thunderstorm. I turned my windshield wipers on and they just smeared like streaks back and forth. I'm like, what? bugs. It wasn't rain. It, it sounded like rain hitting the windshield, but it was thousands of big fat beetles and bugs and mayflies and I don't even know what else. 
I don't even know what that is. It looks like a small bird or a bat hit it. I've also been informed that it's still tick season uh, down in, in Kansas, so I've got to get covered up in, in uh, permethrin or, you know, tick spray and stuff, which is, you know. I found, we hiked all summer long in Montana. Oh, the only kind of bug spray I put on was for mosquitoes, because there's a little bit, occasionally in the evenings you get a bunch of mosquitoes, but we walked through waist high wet grass in the morning and in the evening and all during through the day, all, some, all through the spring, all through the summer, and I found one tick. And I'm glad I wasn't there setting up tree stands. Uh, don't tell my cousin this. Uh, glad I wasn't setting up tree stands in May and June. They carry you off. I mean, you, you, this missing persons, I mean, it's, they'll find like a dried out husk of a, you know, a person tall grass because the ticks got them.